everyone, Dr. Yi here. Today we're going to look at another lesson, a lesson on primary sources. So there are two main goals. The first one is to help you develop the skills to recognize primary sources. And a lot of materials can be primary sources. For example, information from the internet, the video, in the text, even audio files, a piece of artifact, so you can read the list. It's pretty long. And the second goal is to kind of give you a little bit of training on how to locate the information from a primary source. All right now, just real quick, let's differentiate the um, primary sources and the secondary sources. So primary sources are immediate first-hand evidence. Now, there's a key to remember when you try to identify whether something is primary source or not. If the author is a participant or eyewitness, then the information from the author is likely a primary source. So there are some examples here, reporting from a reporter at the event, right? So the reporter is an eyewitness, or maybe he is a, a participant in the event. So that reporting will be considered a primary source. Original research, um, original emails, blogs, journals, letters. So again, just remember, if the author is there during the event, then the information is going to be a primary source. The secondary sources would be something that describes, analyzes, or combines ideas from the primary sources. Now, the secondary source is usually produced after the event, and the author is not at the event. So secondary sources have a similar format as primary sources. So they can be in any of these forms. However, just remember the author is not a participant or an eyewitness. Now some examples, textbooks. So that involves um, analyzing and combining information from the primary sources, right? For example, a textbook may uh, integrate the information from multiple research projects, right? So if the authors of the textbook are not the direct researchers that conducted the research, and they're only uh, putting together the information with a little bit analysis, a little bit synthesis, then that textbook is going to be a secondary source. Uh, similarly, encyclopedia articles right, about historical events, now, the authors of these articles uh, obviously were not at those historical events. Right? So these articles are going to be secondary sources. Um, there's another example. This actually has been in one of the practice questions in the official T's study manual. Articles where the author describes a research project done by others. Right. So you probably um, have read some kind of you know scientific articles written by science reporters. So they are not directly involved with the research project, right? They're only uh, write about the outcomes, the results from the project. So since they're not directly involved, the articles that you know these journalists or reporters write are going to be secondary sources. If the researchers write a research article about their research project, that article is going to be the primary source. Now, let's say there's a science reporter who wrote an article about the study done by these researchers. So the reporter also wrote an article. That article is going to be secondary source, right? Because the reporter did not do the study. So that's going to be considered a secondary source. All right, now here are some of the questions that you may see on T's. For example, which of the following is a primary source or a secondary source? Which of the following describes? So this is about integrating, locating the information, integrating the information. Right? So the question may ask you to kind of identify which of the following describes um, some of the central ideas or supporting details. And last, which of the following is a primary source that could be used to provide opposition to the argument in the passage? So this also requires a little bit understanding. So you understand the position of the author, and then you decide what kind of a primary source can provide 
um, evidence or you know, supporting details to oppose the original argument in the passage. Okay, now let's do some practice. The first few questions do not have any uh, passages, so just kind of uh, individual multiple choice question. So that's just a quick practice to get you familiar with uh, primary sources and secondary sources. And then I will have a passage with a couple questions. Okay, all right, first question. All right, question one, a medical student is writing a paper on the development of mRNA vaccines. Which of the following is a primary source that the student could use to locate information about this topic? A, a documentary on mRNA vaccines. Now, it's likely that people who produces this documentary are not going to be the researchers, right, who actually study mRNA vaccines. So this is the secondary source. B, a news article written by a science journalist. So we talk about this, right? The journalist is not directly involved in the study. So that's also going to be secondary. C, research done by the developers of mRNA vaccines. So that's the correct answer. That's the primary source. Because these people um, conduct the research, right? So they have the first hand information about development of mRNA vaccines. D, a journal article describing the history of mRNA vaccine development. Um, so anytime you see you know, the history of something, um, that's usually a sign for a secondary source because nobody could go back in time, right, and actually experience those historical events. So D is also secondary. Now let's move on to the next page. There are going to be two questions. Okay, question two. So this is about a biography of John Adams, who is the second president of the United States. So this biography is considered, correct answer is secondary source, because this author obviously did not live um, during the period where John Adams was living and serving as the president. So this is definitely a secondary source. Next question, the biography tells the life of John Adams through the use of different forms of materials. So such material from that time period is considered as a source, right? Because the letters, the, the diaries, those things are probably produced by John Adams or somebody who knew him. So all of those things are from the person who was a direct participant of uh, events or who witnessed those events. So those materials are primary sources. Okay, next is a passage. So you have about 45 seconds to read it.
All right, let's move on to the question. All right, so this passage is about an event, an event happening in Hawaii. Legislatures are calling for, for $600 million to help house native Hawaiians through a uh, underfunded homesteading program. And then the next paragraphs talk about, introduces some information from the house speaker, his statements, and then a little bit background about the Hawaii Homes Commission Act. Okay. So question one, regarding this event, which of the following would be a primary source? And there are multiple answers. I know usually on T's you won't see this question format with the multiple answers, but uh, I think this is just a, a good practice to kind of help you identify all different primary sources. All right, so just remember, uh, with this event, a uh, direct participant can be considered a primary source. So there are a few parties involved in this event, right? Legislators in the, the, the Hawaii state, native Hawaiians, because this uh, legislation directly affects them. And there are also uh, state government agencies that are involved Right. We have a Department of Hawaii Homeland. That's the state agency that administers the program. Okay. So A, an interview with a native Hawaiian who is affected by the proposed legislation. So that's one of the correct answers. B, announcement from the, oh, there's a typo here, from the Department of Hawaii Homeland. So that's also the correct answer. C, public announcement from an organization promoting the rights for Native Hawaiians praising the decision. Now, I know the, the, the passage did not mention any organizations, but you can see that this organization uh, is obviously involved in this event a little bit, right? They're providing their comments on um, this legislation. So C is also the correct answer. D, House Speaker Scott Saki's email. So that's um, also the correct answer because he is the House Speaker, right? And then he gives some information to media about this proposal. E, a textbook case study written based on this event by an expert in housing issues. This expert is not one of the stakeholders. So the textbook case study, that's going to be a secondary source. So the correct answer is A all the way through D. Okay, next question. Question two, which of the following describes the reason that prompted the House legislatures to propose the funding for the Hawaii Homes Program? So that information is in the last paragraph. Saki said in the email that the news organization's coverage was absolutely a factor. So basically he was saying that because of the reporting by the news organizations, this was um, brought the issue was brought to the legislature's attention, and that's why they're proposing the funding to try to provide the uh, homesteading program. And let's see, A protected by Native Hawaiians, 
that there's no mentioning of that in the passage. So B, reporting by news organizations on the issue, that's the correct answer. And C and D, legislative leaders in the House were obliged to fulfill terms of the federal law. And that's a true statement, but have they been doing that? Not really, right? Because the program is chronically underfunded. So obviously the legislatures had not been doing much. And D, um, they were pressured by Department of Hawaiian Homelands. That's not the correct answer either, right? There was no pressure from that particular state agency. This information is not in the passage. So correct answer is B. Now, if you're not sure about B, you can try to exclude the obviously wrong answers, right? So A, C, D are not correct. So that confirms that B is the correct answer. All right, this is a relatively short lesson. I don't think differentiating primary and secondary sources would be particularly hard on T's. So that's why this lesson is pretty short. All right, good job, guys. You complete another lesson. And we just have, if I remember correctly, two more lessons left for the reading section. All right, I will see you next time.